Okay, this is about the 19th time that I'm starting this video. And the reason I'm struggling to start it is that it's a little out of context from the normal stuff that I put on my channel. As you know, I'm an ADHD coach and creator. So usually the things I'm putting out there is useful information for ADHDers to live a better life. And today's video is going to be no different, but I'm gonna come at it a different way. Also, if you're landing on this video because you're interested in Joe Dispenza and the retreats that he puts on, then you're gonna get a lot of value out of it as well. So I just wanted to set that context. Last week, I went to um, a meditation retreat hosted by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I say meditation retreat, but really it was like a meditation rave. <laughs> it was like nothing I've ever been to before. And I've done a few meditation retreats. But I had such a profound experience that I thought it was worth creating this video and sharing it with you because the way I feel now versus the way I felt before I left is so completely different. And I'm very skeptical about anything that doesn't have a lot of hard science behind it, which is why I appreciate Joe's work because he does bring a lot of science to his work, which I guess is best described as spiritual work. It's a little woo-woo. And if you're new here, I like to tell people that I'm like a woo and a half, meaning I like woo-woo, but I also need a lot of science and evidence to back up what I'm hearing. So that was one of the very special parts of the retreat that I went to last week. It was a week-long immersive experience where some days we were getting up at 6 a.m. and some days we were getting up at 4 but you're meditating for, I think, a collective 36 hours over the course of the week. So you're basically meditating like it's your full-time job for a whole week. And in between meditations, you would get some breaks, but you would also get a lot of scientific lectures to explain the next meditation that you were going to do. So it became a very progressive experience to the point where by the end of the week, you had a lot of awareness around what you were doing and you had a lot of experience around the meditations you were doing. So I'm not going to get into the experience of the retreat itself because there's a lot of videos out there that cover that. What I prefer to do is share with you the top three things that really resonated with me from this retreat that I learned and relearned because a lot of the things I learned are not new to me or even going to be new to you, but learning them at a very um, visceral level has made all the difference. So here's the top three things that I learned at this retreat that ugh, blew my mind and kind of changed my life a little bit. And the first two are pretty common for all folks, but the third one is specific to ADHD. So if you are one of my ADHDers, make sure you stick around right to the end. And I've also timestamped everything below. So the first thing that I relearned at this event was the understanding of how powerful our thoughts are in terms of creating our lives. Your thoughts set off electrical currents in your brain. The neurotransmitters that come from our thoughts create hormonal reactions in our bodies, peptides and transmitters that send messages to different areas of our body. And if we're not conscious of our thoughts, then we can start to create a reality that we don't want. However, if we do stay conscious of our thoughts, if we're intentional with the things that we put our attention on, then we can create a life that is beautiful and perfectly designed for us as individuals. A lot of what he talks about in terms of thoughts creating things comes down to that idea of manifestation. And to be honest, I have a lot of mixed feelings about the whole idea of manifestation, but the way he describes it and how our thoughts are so powerful and so palpable that literally we could call in anything to us was just completely mind blowing. In fact, during one of the lunch breaks, I spoke to a woman who had been to 15 of his events and the first event she went to with her husband at the time. And during one of the most powerful meditations, she had the insight to actually see what was on her husband's mind in the moment. And what was on his mind was doing it with the girl next door to him. So what she told him, that that's what she saw in her meditation, his face dropped and he was like, I actually was thinking that. So that's not like just a crazy example of how palpable your thoughts can be. I don't know what is. Now, I have always understood that our thoughts can create our realities, but not to the level that I learned this week and how incredibly important it is for you and I to be careful about what we think, because here's the truth. Where our attention goes, our energy flows and our energy is what creates things. So if you're constantly thinking negative thoughts, if you're constantly thinking crappy thoughts about yourself and the people around you, 
you will bring more of that to you. And I see this a lot in my clients because whenever we argue for our limitations, they're ours, especially when it comes to ADHD. I can't do this because I have ADHD. I can't put my attention on that because I have ADHD. I have a horrible morning routine because I have ADHD. And all of that is just perception. You actually do have a morning routine because you wake up in the morning and you do stuff over and over again. It may not be the best routine, but you have a routine and you are able to focus on things. It may not be the things that you want to focus on or that you should be focusing on, but you do have the incredible power to focus on things. It's just, what are you focusing on? So while I've known that in my heart for a long time, understanding the science behind it was just mind blowing. And rather than me regurgitating his philosophies, just look him up because he talks about the same things in all of the podcast interviews that he does and all the YouTube videos that he has. Really, your thoughts do become your personality and your personal reality. So the first takeaway I have for you is to mind your thoughts. Be kind to your mind and good things will come to you. That brings me to the second mind-blowing takeaway that I had this week is that meditation and pure intent has the ability to not only heal us and the people around us, but to bring things to us. So what do I mean by that? When we meditate with focused attention, we bring our brain and our heart into coherence, meaning that they become very resonant. The information between the heart and the mind becomes crystal clear. And when you take that resonant energy to heal yourself and other people, it is amazing what can happen. Transformation and change truly happened this week for me and for a lot of people around me. I will tell you that one of the main reasons I went to this retreat and the visceral feeling I had coming into it was a lack of belonging and a lack of connection. And I've been feeling that ever since the pandemic. And for me, that shows up as this need to keep moving. Like, I mean, physically moving houses because I have this belief that you know, if I'm able to change my environment, I can change my life. And to some degree that's true, but the problem is that every time I move, I bring all my baggage with me. So if there was one thing that I was able to heal this week was that sense of not feeling like I belonged. I came home with such a clear and profound sense of connection that it has inspired me to meditate every day and never miss a day. I have no idea if this is just the afterglow of that event and maybe it'll wear off, but I'm certainly not going to test that theory by stopping what I have started this week. So if there's anything that I can impart on you in terms of this idea of meditation for healing and change is that it is true, it is real, and if you get serious about it, you can make ridiculous amounts of change in your life. Now, I have been a meditator for a long time, but the meditations that he does are way more intense. It's also paired with a lot of science and research so that when you go into the meditations, you actually understand why you're meditating and what it's doing for you so that you don't just get into it and feel like, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna give up on this and assume that meditation doesn't work for me. So if you are one of those people that have tried it and it hasn't really done anything for you, you might wanna give his meditations a whirl. And the last thing that I learned, which was kind of a ping from the universe, and I didn't really learn it from him per se, but the idea came from something he was talking about. In one of his lectures, he was talking about some research they were doing on a group of autistic children. And one of the uh, symptoms of autism in young children is constipation and a lot of digestive issues, which I thought was really interesting. And it inspired me to just make a little note for myself to research that from the context of ADHD, because even though ADHD and autism are very different, they're both neurodivergent disorders. So I thought maybe there was some overlap. And he was also talking about this in the context of the third energy center. Now, energy centers, if you're not familiar with them, are these non-physical locations in the body where we hold a lot of energy, and they're related to our nervous system and our endocrine system. Now, energy centers are widely accepted in Eastern medicine and Eastern science. You may have heard them being referred to as chakras. That's what they are referred to in yoga and Ayurvedic science. But essentially, they're just centers of energy in the body. And the third center is related to our digestion and it includes our digestive system and the pancreas. So when we think about digestive systems, 
we're not just talking about digesting food. We're talking about everything that comes into our environment that we have to digest. And that is true of all folks. But when you have ADHD, there's often an impairment or an imbalance in this third center to the point that we are not able to digest as quickly or as efficiently all of the information that's coming in from our environment. So we get overstimulated very easily. Now that can be information that comes in in terms of the things that we're listening to and watching, or it can be people's energy. Like if somebody walks in a room and they're in a bad mood, if you're the type of person that immediately thinks that that has something to do with you and that you need to change that person's mood in order for you to regulate your own mood, then that is part of an imbalance that might be happening in this energy center. This energy center is related to self-regulation, processing information, getting things done, being productive, creating structure in our lives so that we can actually accomplish our goals, and energetic boundaries. Both our physical boundaries, as in how we accept the behaviors of other people around us, but also boundaries around our time and our energy, which if you're anything like me, you struggle with a lot. And the way we overcompensate for those extremely porous boundaries is by overcommitting ourselves and people pleasing and perfectionism so that if we don't have proper boundaries to protect ourselves, at least we can show up in the world with this hypervigilance that will keep us safe from the world around us. So all of that points to an imbalance in this energy center. And when we have that imbalance, physically it shows up as digestive issues, obesity, issues with your liver and your pancreas, or issues with constipation, as we learned with these autistic children. Now, it can also show up emotionally in traits such as overthinking, perfectionism, always looking for validation externally, not feeling a sense of self-worth or confidence and always second guessing yourself and not having the ability to follow through on the things that you want to do, which sounds exactly like ADHD. Now, when that center is balanced, we have a strong sense of identity and purpose and self-worth, and we're able to follow through on our goals. We're able to set plans and actually move them towards completion. And because of that, we have a strong sense of self-trust and self-regulation. So when I heard all of that, my mind was just completely blown because like I said, I've known about the energy centers and the chakras for a long time, but I had never made the connection between a chakra imbalance and how that shows up as ADHD. Now you may be thinking that is absolutely me to a T, but how do I balance the center? And that is exactly what I'm going to cover in the next video because it's just way too big a topic to cover in today's video. But I wanna wrap this up by coming back to that meditation retreat and just telling you that if there's one thing I want you to take away from today's video, it's that the power of meditation can help you heal yourself emotionally and physically, but also to slow your mind down and create enough balance in your environment and in your mind and your thinking that you can create consciously the life that you want instead of erratically reacting to the environment and the life that you currently have. So with that, I'm gonna put a pin in this. And again, I'm not selling this retreat at all. It's probably not for everyone because it's very intense. However, if you are curious about Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, then I will link to his books below. You can grab them from Amazon. And I'll also link to interviews he's done here on YouTube so you can start diving into his ideas and his meditations for free. So on that note, guys, I would love to know, have you ever heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza's work? Have you tried his meditations? And does this idea of an imbalance in the third center ring true for you? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe while you're at it, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now.